Hey guys, and welcome back to Better C Sharp. Today we're going to be talking about switch statements. And I know what you're thinking. Tony, you just took away all our static classes. I know you're not going to take away switch statements too. Yep, I am. <laughs> so, let's talk about it. Uh, switch statements kind of encourage bad behavior. Uh, what they do is uh, you end up switching over the same thing multiple times in multiple places. And what ends up happening is uh, you end up violating the open-close principle. And we've talked about the open-close principle in the series a bunch of times already, and I'm going to continue to talk about it because, in my opinion, it's the most important solid principle. Uh, and I'm probably going to do a video on just the solid principles at some point soon. Uh, but so... OCP or open close principle is, you know, open for extension, closed for modification. And that means we want to be able to change our program to add new features uh, and change things without touching old code, without breaking things. Because anytime you touch old code, things break. That's just inevitable. Um, and switch statements are like a pit of despair that forces you to change old code anytime you add a new case to one of them. Uh, so let's talk about it a little bit more with a code sample. So I've set up a new project, uh, before we get started, I've set up a new project here. We're going to be using this solution, uh, for quite a few videos coming up, uh, cause there's a lot I want to talk about, but today we're just going to be in the vehicles project, which is going to be a class library that helps us describe vehicles and get their cost right now. That's what it's going to do anyway. So looking at vehicles, uh, right here we have an enum uh, vehicle type, car, truck, and SUV. And we have a class vehicle that has a vehicle type, um, a door count, a seat count, and a weight. So this by itself, you know, it doesn't look like it's that bad. Like there's nothing here that like screams, stop, you know, code review, like don't do this. Uh, but if we start looking at where this code is used, you can kind of see... Like, we have this calculate cost function that switches on vehicle type, right? And you can guarantee that there's going to be more logic somewhere else that switches on vehicle type. If you have, a, if you have an enumeration, people are going to switch on it. And these switches are dangerous because what happens if somebody adds a new case, a new variant to the enum, right? What if we've added uh, a semi, you know, like an 18-wheeler? Um, or like a tank. What if we had a tank? Now, everywhere you had a switch statement over vehicle type, you have to go back and add that. And what happens if the, some of the projects that reference vehicle are not in this solution, right? Like you've, you've added a new thing and there's solutions out there that reference this project that aren't aren't loaded currently and you know and so you're like hey let me go find all the usages of vehicle type and you're like hey i see them they're all right here i can go and and address them but there might be a project out there somewhere that's not in the solution right and you're gonna miss that one or what if there's a nuget package right like what if your library is a nuget package and you've got this thing that people switch over and you've added a new one and it's like imperative that they switch over it to to avoid some behavior, right? And like you can guarantee that they're not going to do that when they first upgrade the NuGet packages. They're going to be like, you can put it in your your help file or whatever. They're going to browse right over it. They're going to skip it. They're going to be like, okay, their program's going to break, and they're going to blame you. So uh, all that is to say, uh, switches are dangerous. Um, I've worked places where I've seen switch statements that are 60 cases long, that are you know 300 lines long, and there's not just one of those, there's six of them, right? Like, you can't just switch over something like this once, you have to do it everywhere because you're determining behavior over it. And the ultimate downfall is that uh, you're not containing the behavior of the code in the places where it's relevant, right? Like you're moving the behavior out into other places, like calculating cost, like what we're doing here is we're trying to get a cost multiplier, right? Like we have this base cost, if it's a truck, we wanna multiply it by two, if it's an SUV, we wanna multiply it by something else. Like really the behavior we're looking for, and this is generally the case when you have a switch like this, 
the behavior we're looking for is that we want vehicle to be able to tell us what this multiplier should be. And there's probably other behaviors that we want out of a vehicle that, you know, if we're encouraging people to switch over a type, they're going to implement the behavior in their code instead of like adding the behavior in the vehicle code. So that's kind of the issue. And you're never going to find all the switch statements. So let's talk about how to fix this because there's definitely a million ways to fix this, but the probably the most straightforward way is uh, let's go take a look at vehicle. Um, probably what we want to do is we want to implement instead of having vehicle type, we want to instead have a vehicle interface, right? And then have multiple implementations of that interface for each of those types. So uh, let's look at what that looks like. So I'm going to use OmniSharp here to extract an interface, right? And really what this says is these are the things that make up a vehicle. And what we want to do then is like we were saying in our vehicle cost calculator, I don't know why it keeps breaking, but we're going to ignore it for now. What, what we're saying is we want to know what the multiplier is. And so really that's what we want in our interface. So we're going to say decimal cost multiplier, and that's going to be read only. So now that we have that, um, really we can change this implementation, right? To car and implement this guy. Uh, so car, cost multiplier for car was just going to be one, right? Which you can see over here, we're just returning the base cost. Oops. Right here, just the base cost. Um, and then we want to also have another implementation uh, for, say, truck, right? And this one is going to return two. And I can see what you're thinking already. Like we're duplicating code here. Um, I'm going to show you guys a trick that will let you kind of get away from this. Uh, so what I do is if there's a bunch of code like this, where like you're just, you end up with a bunch of properties like this, what you can do is go ahead and make uh, a public abstract class vehicle base which implements i vehicle and what we want to do is uh, implement it abstractly right so and we don't want to do part of it abstractly Oops. so these guys we want to actually implement and then cost multiplier we will leave up to other guys um and so what we can do here then is go vehicle base and it's going to tell us like, Hey, uh, you're like hiding the inherited members because vehicle base has already done these for us. Um, and this one's abstract. So what we need to do is override, right? And then these guys can just go away because we don't have to do them. Vehicle base already does it for us. And then we also need SUV. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. I'm going to make a new implementation just like this. Two of them, actually. So we're going to do truck, which is going to give back two. Um, and then SUV, which is going to give back, uh, what was it? It was actually 1.75, right? And so now we've moved the determination of the cost multiplier into vehicles themselves instead of having the behavior spread about because of switch statements, right? And that a noom type. And that a noom type is completely gone. Um, and so if we go back and look at vehicle cost calculator, now vehicle is gone because it's become an interface, right? So we're taking in an I vehicle. And the interesting thing about I vehicle is that it gives us our multiplier, right? So now we can just say, hey, return base cost times vehicle dot multiplier. And, and that gives us our, that gives us our cost. Um, 
So let's look at that one more time just to go over it real quick. Uh, we have I vehicle, and honestly, uh, you could make an argument for removing these um, because they're not being used uh, as part of the interface, but we're going to keep them for now. Um, and so we have an abstract class just so we don't have to have public int door count c count and wait all over the place because if we didn't if we didn't have these um we would have to implement these abstractly and then they would end up in all of our car truck and suv so that is why uh that's why we got rid of those or that's why we have those in in the abstract class so this is a pretty common pattern, I think, uh, to make it easy to implement more classes down the line. So, so let's go back and look at uh, cost calculator one more time. Um, system. So now we're taking an I vehicle, and we're just returning base cost times the cost multiplier. But what we've ended up doing now is we kind of have a hidden switch here, right? Like. You can see cost type there, and this is kind of, if you see type on the end of one of your enums, it's kind of a hint that you should probably have classes for each one of those types, right? Let's do the same thing for vehicle cost calculator. So we're going to have, let's go ahead and extract an interface, right? So we have an interface, it's got calculate cost, it's going to take in a vehicle. And we don't really want to take in cost type because we're going to have that as part of uh, as part of the implementation. Um, so now uh, what we can change this to is you see that we have wholesale gives back 5,000 and anything besides that gives back 8,000. So like already, like if you have values like this and you added a new type, like you're not even going to find that in a switch. Like if you're searching for switches, like you're going to miss this one. Um, <clears throat> so that's another reason like enums that are that style are like dangerous or potentially dangerous. So what we want to do is go ahead and make a public class, uh, private party. We'll do wholesale first. Wholesale uh, vehicle cost calculator, right? And that's going to implement I vehicle cost calculator. And we're going to go ahead and implement the interface and kind of what we're missing here now is actually what we're going to call base cost that's kind of what what this is right base cost so we could have this be like you could have this be for instance um, public class vehicle cost calculator um I have vehicle cost calculator and have it be um, something you take in a constructor, right? So like, uh, you know, private decimal, decimal base cost, and then have a constructor that may be, uh, you know, you can set up that way, but that doesn't deal with our type issue. So our type issue is kind of what we're trying to deal with here. And so what we really need to do here is have, uh, have this have base cost. So this is going to be like, you know, return, uh, you know, 8,000, this or wholesale is 5,000 times vehicle dot cost multiplier. Um, and we're going to end up with another implementation of this, right? Like that is a, uh, private party vehicle cost calculator. I don't know why I picked the hardest things to type. Um, and this is going to be 8,000, uh, 8, right? And so you can kind of see that we have very similar code. And the only thing that's changing here is the uh, that constant there. And so when you see something like this, you could, like, when you see a block of code and only, and you see a duplicate of it with a single change, like, that should be an instant thing that's like, I can make this better, right? So the thing that we could do to make this better is we could have something like uh, decimal base cost or something like that. And so what we could do again here is implement the interface. This one could be 
5,000. And this one could be um, 8,000, right? And now when we go into these, base cost and base cost. And now they're even more similar. So what we could do is pull that one also up to an abstract class, right? Like um, if we wanted to public uh, abstract class vehicle cost calculator base, which implements I vehicle cost calculator. And we will implement this abstractly again, except uh, now instead of doing calculate cost abstractly, we're actually just going to do that. So we'll make this return the base, uh, the base cost times the multiplier. And now um, in our implementations down here, uh, uh, sorry, these should be implementing vehicle cost calculator base. So, and what we can do is implement the abstract class, and now our base cost for this one is going to be 5,000, and it already has the calculate cost method, right? So, uh, same thing down here. We're just going to change this to vehicle cost calculator base, and uh, this should be override. So, I hope this kind of helps you guys see um, ways that you can get around having these massive switch statements everywhere that kind of determine behavior because it's not it's not healthy to have that in your code because you know if we ended up adding a new type you know a new cost type is probably not as going to happen as often as a new vehicle right like if we wanted to add a new vehicle um, if we want to add a new type of vehicle now, we can just be like, you know, public class tank, right? Vehicle base. And now we just want to implement that. And it's like, hey, this thing costs a lot. It's going to be 500 or 5,000 times uh, whatever the cost is, right? So, like, this is, uh, this is super easy to implement now, right? And you don't have to change any switch statements. You don't have to change any of that stuff, like... It's very, very easy. Um, one thing I do want to mention is I'm keeping all these classes in one file just for demonstration purposes. These should all be in separate files. Uh, I do this so you guys can see them pretty easily. Uh, so let's go and look one more time at cost calculator and our vehicle base. Uh, so this is what we ended up with. Um, I hope this helps you guys see what a difference it can make in your code. Uh, to not have to deal with switch statements. Um, they they violate the open close principle. They're hard to maintain. You can never find them all, especially if they're in like other projects, like if you've got a NuGet package or something like that. Um, they're just very difficult to maintain. And so anytime you're writing a switch statement, like ask yourself, am I ever going to add new cases? And if the answer is no, then you're wrong. And if the answer is yes, which is always yes, then you should probably make that uh, an interface and implement it differently for different types. Okay, uh, I think that's all I've got. Uh, in the next video, we're probably gonna write some unit tests. I've been avoiding it because I wanted to make it a bigger video, um, but I think it's finally about time that we start doing that. And this is a good uh, example of something that we can unit test and we will resume back with this project next time looking at unit tests. Uh, if you disagree with anything I've said here, feel free to leave it in the comments. If you like the, you know, the coding changes I've made, if you like the advice I'm giving, uh, if you like seeing me zoom around Vim and, and make C Sharp stuff, uh, subscribe, because I'm going to be doing this plenty more. Uh, I appreciate everybody watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.